coastline from flooding. It's certainly technologically possible. The old cradle of civilization becomes really the center of civilization. They would be the last coastal cities never affected by sea level rising. By the end of the next century, sea levels would have risen by some 22 feet. Some cities may be saved through the construction of super dams. Others that can't be defended are lost to the sea. Exposed countries that are too poor to build defenses are flooded. Around the world, hundreds of millions are displaced. One wealthy country that would struggle to survive if sea levels rose by an additional 16 feet is the Netherlands. The Dutch are one of the most endangered countries. A large proportion is under sea level as it currently is. We have this old finger in the dike story that shows culturally they have been aware of and have been dealing with the problem of sea level in their country. The Dutch learned their lesson when a massive storm destroyed their sea defenses in 1953. Large parts of the country were flooded and almost 2,000 people drowned. Since then, the Dutch have turned the Netherlands into a fortress against the sea. The Dutch are the finest engineers with the most experience now thinking about how to wall off the sea. It's certainly not the old idea of a wall, a dike, that we used to think of. It's now much more clever. Vast storm surge barriers are constantly on standby, ready to close if a major storm is imminent. And there are new style levees that prevent the rising sea from seeping underneath them. Their design can be adapted to hold off the sea even if sea levels rose by 16 feet per century. But there simply may not be the time to build such super levees everywhere. It's likely that by the 23rd century, our ice sheets will be melting at an even faster rate than before, and that our oceans will rise with increasing speed. Its cause is the continuing hunger for cheap energy by the planet's growing population. The problem that I see again is the number of people. Every new person is going to want housing. Every new person is going to need food, obviously, and want transportation. Let's say that all of us cut our gas emissions. So 6.5 billion of us cut down by a third all our usage, and then we raise the population by a third. All those new people are just adding back to what we've cut away. Some leading scientists believe that our CO2 levels could quadruple over the next centuries. It would mean reaching CO2 levels that we last had over 50 million years ago, when there was no ice on the planet, and when sea levels were more than 230 feet higher than today. In the worst case, if we are so foolish as to burn all the fossil fuels so that carbon dioxide increases to more than 1,000 parts per million, then there's no question. We will melt all the ice on the planet, which would mean a 75 meter or almost 250 foot uh, rise in sea level. It's not millennia. It's not going to take thousands of years. The forcing of humans is so large that it will do the whole job within a time scale of centuries, I believe. This is the worst case scenario. CO2 levels treble, global temperatures shoot up, and the Antarctic goes into rapid meltdown. The world's coastlines are eroded as sea levels rise by an additional 50 feet by the end of the 23rd century. One rich city that would struggle to defend itself is London, Western Europe's largest metropolis. Its main river, the Thames, is tidal, and water levels vary by up to 22 feet. 
the Thames barrier defends the city against storm surges from the sea. If a tide is unusually high, the barrier closes its gates and inner London is protected. If sea levels rose by six feet, the barrier would have to be replaced by a huge seawall upstream. But if they rose by 50 feet per century, there simply wouldn't be the time to build adequate sea defenses. It would be a disastrous situation. It would mean you simply can't inhabit the coastal uh, areas because you will have a continually changing uh, sea level. So we really do not want to go down that path. But if CO2 continues to increase at a growing rate, 50 feet of sea level rise per century is a distinct possibility. The swiftly rising oceans would bypass any new sea walls. London and large parts of England would be flooded within a few centuries. The worst case scenario is when we have maybe four to six feet within a decade. That's the, not the kind of thing where you sort of sell your houses and uh, say it's gonna be okay. And, uh, but you just, you're, you're trying to get out of there without drowning. It's gonna challenge the existence of civilization. Tower Bridge, one of London's most famous landmarks, would become a solemn outpost in the sea. I mean, there would be a degree of panic that we cannot imagine as each country tried to figure out how it somehow could, could survive. The rising oceans would seep underneath obsolete levees, or they would simply break through where there wasn't the time or money to strengthen sea walls. The rapidly rising sea levels would soon overwhelm large parts of continental Europe. By the time that all of the Antarctic ice has melted, Denmark, the Netherlands, as well as large parts of northern Germany and France will be lost. When we build cities now, we build them forever. With sea level rise, I think we should start planning our cities as if they were long-term campgrounds, because at some point, we will probably have to abandon them. The German capital, Berlin, would become a coastal town within centuries. Another hundred years, and the city would be lost to the sea. The rising sea would creep up the River Seine and find its way to Paris. With its elevation of 115 feet, the French capital would be extremely vulnerable to sea level rise. It would flood after all the world's ice has melted. The affluent countries would try to protect their borders against millions and millions who would be leaving the areas most uh, severely affected. But the stresses associated with migration on this scale are unimaginable. The meltdown of the planet's ice sheets would completely transform our world. But even as our coasts are pushed back by the rising oceans, resourceful humans would try to adapt. Already, some have plans to rescue New York. Manhattan Island is flanked by two fast-flowing tidal rivers. The entire city is directly exposed to the North Atlantic and therefore extremely vulnerable to sea level rise. Professor Malcolm Bowman is an oceanographer and expert on the effects of sea level rise in New York. If the, the worst case scenario of the rapid meltdown of the ice sheet on Greenland, the West Antarctic ice sheet, were to happen extremely rapidly, the future of New York City is in peril. So the city has two options. One, either build massive defenses, or two, start evacuating the city and its population to higher ground. The flooding of New York's underground installations would only be the first in a series of catastrophic events. After the first six feet of sea level rise, parts of lower Manhattan would be flooded. 
If sea levels then rose by 50 feet, the water would move into Times Square. Behind me is the uh, Manhattan Bridge. With sea levels rising 250 feet, that bridge would be have seawater lapping around the roadway. It, the New York City as we know it would not exist. But there is a way that New York might adapt even to extreme sea level rise. The idea is to build on water. Here in the Netherlands are several communities of floating houses. Kuhn Althaus is a visionary architect who believes that they are the beginning of a completely new trend in design and construction. So what you will see is that people go and design floating apartment buildings and really floating structures like 200 by 200 meters with roads on top of it and with cars on top of it and houses. Such floating cities could be built with a new lightweight material that's like a concrete sponge. The beauty about floating cities is that you don't have to protect them from nature. They just go on with nature, they live with nature. And it will just go up and down with the water. Holthouse has made a design for a seawall to protect Manhattan and for floating districts to be attached to it. New York, we're going to build a new Wall Street around it, around Manhattan. So we can redesign the city around it, or even having uh, floating leisure around it, flo floating agriculture. Floating New York is still at the concept stage. But one day, this may be the solution for hundreds of coastal cities facing inundation. The best silver lining of the whole thing to me is that it will require a united world, a world war against sea level, will have to bring all of the squabbling governments to act together. The sea doesn't care what your national boundary is. It's an equal opportunity flutter. We will have to, as a planet, come at this in a united fashion. Whatever the answer to the rising tides, massive sea walls or super dams, sea level rise will happen. The question is not if, but how fast and by how much our oceans will rise. A lot depends on how much more